I'm confused who I'm supposed to be. Practitioner, demand planner, thought leader, podcast host, supply chain enthusiast, ignorant student, informed teacher, heartthrob, a nobody, speaker, or just some guy that goes to the conferences because he likes the food. I don't know. Let's figure it out. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Another fabulous episode of IBF On Demand. I'm your multi-dimensional, confused, and not-so-humble host, Eric Wilson. You can still find me at eric at ibf.org. Eric at ibf.org. Thanks for the follows, the subscribes. Uh, really amazed what's happened over the last couple years. Let's keep this momentum going through this year as well. Find me on LinkedIn. I share a lot of content there. Obviously, you can find me on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us there as well, IBF On Demand. I want to thank Arkiva, back year number three, driving business transformation by solving what others cannot. Thank you, Arkiva, for once, once again being a fabulous sponsor, but a fabulous product then as well. There's lots of job titles out there. There's lots of roles out there as well. I mean, all 12 of you out there watching this, got different types of titles and job that you do. We're going to talk a little bit about those different roles and what the difference is in those roles. First of all, I do want to mention we have some boot camps coming up this year in 2023. I'm excited. These boot camps, what these boot camps are is they're really a intensive on a single type of subject. We go through two days of an end to end covering a subject, and then especially during a one day extra on a bonus topic that we cover. It's a great, we get a room full of practitioners together, a subject matter expert being able to lead the conversation. It's a great, fantastic two or three days if you want to take a part of it. In February, there's still time to register. We're going to be in Las Vegas for an SNOP boot camp. March 15th through the 17th, we're going to be in Chicago. It's a Fundamentals of Demand Planning and Business Forecasting Boot Camp. And I'm excited because August 9th through the 11th, we're going to have a Supply Planning and Supply Chain Management Boot Camp in Nashville, Tennessee. It happens to be over my birthday as well. So last year is pretty pathetic being alone. So this year you can actually join me for my birthday for a Supply Planning Boot Camp August 9th through the 11th to check out that or check out any of the boot camps we have at IBF.org. The problem is supply chain is a very broad umbrella. And it's, and it's easy to say supply planning or demand management opposed to physical goods movement or storage and things of that sort. But, but it really gets confusing for many as well as to how exactly to define supply planning planning and what the boundaries are of it. The problem is, is a lot of companies are confused about really the difference. The lines get really blurred. A lot of times the hiring managers are confused as well. Speaking with one gentleman who really is a leader in placing people in supply chain, demand planning, SNOP type of roles. He's a good friend of mine and speaking about with him about this problem. And he says that he speaks to companies And they tell them that he's looking for a demand planner, for example, and what they're really looking for is a supply planner and vice versa. He actually gave me an example of one of the job descriptions he's gotten. And it was to manage materials for manufacturing process, including creation of material requisitions for buying group based on existing and new demand. This was the role for a demand planner is what they called a demand planner. So you can see there's a lot of ambiguity in the terms. Well, today we want to kind of sort out some of that ambiguity. I have a very special guest today. I, I met her in Amsterdam. We got to spend some you know, great time after the conference uh, uh, talking as well. Alina is a senior manager at Danfoss, leading an SNOP process excellence team, as well as a process facilitator for a global SNOP process. 
Before this role, Alina spent 10 plus years working with Danfoss, global supply chain, and various roles, including an SNOP manager, process, and project manager, introducing SNOP process in multiple locations. She holds a certificate in project management and project management expert certificate. She also holds degree in linguistics and te teacher trainer and certified business trainer. The scary part, she's actually better English than I am. Let me help welcome Alina. So welcome. Hi. Hi, Eric. Nice to see Hi. you. Nice to see you. I'm excited about this podcast that we had some a great conversation in Amsterdam. Uh, and we, we talked did. about a lot of things and you know, not only, you know, the English language, uh, but also we <laughs> talked a little bit about supply as well. <laughs> which, which we love so much, right? Yeah. So it was a great broad conversation that we had. And I wanted to kind of continue that conversation because I think there's a lot of confusion between supply, demand, uh, and people kind of like mix these words up a lot of times in organizations. And I kind of wanted to get your viewpoint of, because I know you deal with a lot of training, you have a lot of background and experience and kind of helping me define those two goals a little bit better and how we can build those two goals inside of organizations. Kind of, kind of what my thought process was for today. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Well, well first of all, let's, let's start with that. Defining, since you're a, ling a linguistic expert, <laughs> Defining supply and demand inside of an organization, how would you define those two goals? I think, first of all, it is important that uh, we look at the SNOP process as whole, right? So we know that there is sales involved, sales demand part, and we know that there is the supply part, the operations, right? And when we understand that it's all one body with really with important functions, uh, then we can start putting the uh, the definitions of what it was, of what it is. Starting with demand, where we are looking into the market needs, right? And trying to get all the intel on what we are going to sell and then transforming it into what we can actually provide as the on the supplying part right and how we can support the sales and this is where demand and supply meet discuss and contribute into the well let's say deployment plan at the end and this discussion has to be cyclic and ongoing and looping into each other so that we are not splitting or separating demand and supply but also understanding who is contributing to what and what is the loop back? Okay, so they are two distinct different things. Demand planning and supply planning are two distinct different things. But I think you mentioned, okay. you know, even though the vocabulary is confusing, whatever they stand for, everyone should understand it the same way. I think it's one of the things that yeah. I, you kind of stress. Yeah, yeah. I've um, uh, when we talk about side process, we start saying demand plan forecast, production plan, deployment plan, and all of these things, they are important at different part of the side process, or SNOP process during the month, right? And we cannot say demand plan and expect that this is the same thing that uh, we see during supply planning. We should understand in every point of the process how this plan transforms. So we start with creating demand plan, sales plan that goes, that gets netted against our inventory in the supply chain, against, let's say, open orders, get adjusted with the open orders, becomes at some point supply plan, and then also with further adjustments, which we can do on the capacity, which we can do uh, on uh, limiting or extending what we actually want to deploy into the system, that becomes deployment plan. And we cannot then compare at the end, we cannot say, yeah, this is my sales plan and this is what I have to deploy, what I have to produce according to, that would be wrong. And uh, everybody who are involved in this process also has to understand how the plan evolves from the beginning to the, to the end, right? And what numbers we're looking at at different point of time during the month. And uh, okay. that becomes crucial because uh, we don't want to confuse these things so what i hear is words matter 
And what you call things really do matter. What you call roles really do matter. But then having an understanding all the way through the process of who owns what, who's yeah. doing what, what the handoffs are, those are equally important as well. Absolutely. Yes. So when it comes to roles and responsibilities within the organization, we need to be very clear who is facilitating the demand plan, who is then looking at the rough cut capacity plan and uh, making sure that we do the right estimation of, well, what we can produce versus what we need to sell. And then end of the day, who is uh, reconciling and validating these numbers at the end. And that would not be the same people who are creating the uh, demand plan, talking to the markets and so on. So when we are talking about uh, creating the competences within the organization, all of these roles needs to be defined and assigned. Demand planner, supply planner, right? Demand manager, SIAP managers, these things uh, are crucial to the right operation of the normal process. Okay. So we've defined that there's different roles and you help define what exactly some of those roles are. Now, so ideally the companies won't have a demand slash supply planner or even demand planner slash PSYOP or SNOP owner as well, that they have distinct roles. Now, a lot of companies that have these different roles without a strong SNOP process, they have silos. They build these walls between demand and supply that exists and demand kind of throws the Mm -hmm. forecast over the wall. Supply doesn't believe it. They kind of chuck back, you know, what they think is going to happen. And you don't have this, you have this silo type of, of, of companies. How do we really break down those silos? How do we work together? Now that we've divided the two goals, how do we really start building the bridges back together? Yeah. Yeah. So, as you rightly said, very often at the beginning of going into SNOP process, we said, okay, now we have our demand and we have these calls and we talk to the market. And then somewhere in the factory, people are looking at the numbers and preparing supply. But if we do not create the end to end flow, then this becomes, uh, as you mentioned, we might go- get into silos and then start playing some kind of blaming game. Yeah, because the numbers are wrong and so on. Uh, I see that to avoid that, we need to have the whole process under umbrella of a SIAP manager so that there is one person who is available there at every point of time, not necessarily, well, he's not dealing with the sales forecast, but he knows what are the main highlights and he brings it into the supply planning where this can be discussed. And if there are any uh, questions or contributions back to demand, then that's the next cycle when we can go back and discuss. So one thing is the person who is leading SNOP end to end, who understands exactly when things have to happen and who is responsible for that or that input and making sure that it happens. Of course, also being there at the executive handshake meetings, facilitating the executive handshake to get the right decisions on the right time and bring them back into organization. So the person, the key person who drives that and the, well, the process itself, that it's happening every month, that it's happening again uh, with improvements on different steps. We will not get it in one shot in January and then all year everything is perfect right so it's again and again and again we're going through those steps and improving uh well depending on where we want to get okay it makes sense we got the process owner someone who are driving that end-to-end process you had a a, in amsterdam one of the quotes that i got from your presentation that i really liked was you said don't expect the bound the bordering functions will know what to do or what you do type, you know? So, I mean, taking that quote, as far as if you're a demand planner, do they truly understand supply planning, supply planning, truly understand demand planning? I mean, is there a, is there a need then not only outside of the PSYOP or SNOP process to really let your brothers and sisters and the other functions understand what you do as well? Thank you for the question, Eric, because I think this is so much important that we do not exist in the bubble. 
SNOP process is such a key for decision making that we cannot just afford that. Yeah, we will just do something here a bit and uh, uh, get in our particular area very high results. We need to really expand and uh, well educate each other. Even the brothering processes like demand and supply, right? We need to have kind of exchange and uh, onboarding programs, even if it's one or two hours, what the others are doing. So what demand planners are doing, right? So together with the sales, on the other hand, what supply planning in the factories, what is what it means and how it, again, how it transforms from our demand numbers so that we are not looking for 100 when it's actually 5,000, yeah? Uh, and another thing is not only this within the SNOP, but also when we go outside to the organization, well, product management, we cannot go without them because they segment the products. They give us the background for our pl planning, right? So how the groups are created and so on. Finance, absolutely important. The decisions that we want to be made in the uh, SNOP process, they will be impacted and impact finance. So we also want that the people, our financial controllers, they know why it's happening and where it's happening. Of course, all the executives, the, the leaders in the company, uh, they should use the process properly and understand the benefits of it. And that also means that when we introduce or when we mature the SNOP process, we need to onboard all those people by, well, giving the training, showing how we do that, taking them from the processes and also um, showing the impact end of the day how the decisions are made and followed up. Okay. You, you mentioned that onboarding and training thing. You know, I, before you, I brought you on board, I mentioned this confusion, especially in HR managers on job titles, roles. We, you know, when they're, when they're looking at bringing someone in, there's a lot of confusion sometimes if the title doesn't meet the, what the actual role is. What would you recommend as far as for an organization, as far as, you know, going out, defining supply, you know, the hiring process, looking at the hiring process, what is right for an organization as far as demand, supply, any advice to the hiring managers of what exactly to look for? Yeah, I would start, so before going and hiring people and making the job description for somebody new, right, I would take the process and describe all the steps that have to be done in the normal, regular SNOP process. Uh, let's take aside a bit the, if we are introducing, because then it's a bit special, it's like a project, but we have the monthly cycle. We have certain things that have to be done. Market, analyzing the market, statistical forecast, adjustments, going into the supply capacity checks, uh, pre sap meeting, executive handshake, so all these things. And within those steps, there are very clear activities, right? Open the tool, do this, do that, run the approval, and prepare the simple uh, roles and responsibilities metrics. Who does what? Who opens the tool? Who signs off certain approval on level A, level B, right? Who needs to uh, call for the meeting with the executives? And then this will become kind of a skeleton for your job description. On top of that, then you can put more words and explanations and so on and so forth. But we need to start with the process that has to be done, absolutely has to be done. We cannot have demand planning without, well, running statistics and looking at the results and then correcting uh, some bias, right? And then uh, without maybe even checking the code number level projects and so on. But we need to start somewhere. And that so would be where... I will start now. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, <laughs> that's, no, but that's where, the, where I, I start. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at nitty gritty details and then creating a beautiful description that would uh, help me to attract people into this exciting job. <laughs> I agree. Exciting. So, so opposed to just going on a uh, on Googling a job description and copying and pasting, actually look to see what your people do in demand yeah, and what, what your what people you want do to in be supply. Done, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so I got time for one final topic that I do want to topic because I think it's something that you do great there uh, and, and something that you're passionate about as well. It, it's the training and engaging the employees after you onboard them, after you bring them on, after you yeah. define their goals to keep them understanding what's happening as far as in demand and supply bridging those gaps between the two. I know you do a lot of training and engagement. How important is that after you're bringing someone on, as, as onboarding and continuously to keep them engaged? Yeah, well, that's very important, right? Because we want to always grow. We want to increase maturity level, right? If we learned to do A, it still means that we want to go B, C, and so on. Uh, to build that, of course, we do have those, what we what we created before, those job instructions. Very structural, but uh, very, let's say, dry. But on top of that, we also want to, to teach more, to be more creative, right? To be more uh, passionate about what we do. So therefore, from those dry job, job descriptions, we also have face-to-face uh, -face training, right? Showing how things can be improved, how... Uh, how actually big the world is, right? Uh, we are also, we can also create some videos uh, that help to discover tips and tricks, right? Because, uh, well, sometimes you do something uh, just how we used to do things, but it could be a better way, it could be easier way, it could be smarter way, right? And things like that also allow, if you are in a big organization, it allows 100 people do the learning at once. So it just makes it faster and easier. So trainings are very important on the one hand to um, organize the knowledge in the same way so that everybody knows the same, but also to um, help people grow and develop. Right? There could be level A trainings, basic job description, description one to three, you can do that, but you can also and encourage people to become qualified users, to know more, to actually start proposing solutions and improvements, which uh, for many people as well, this is something to, that they want. Yeah. And, and a little bit selfish or humbling, I, I think you actually will utilize some podcast and be able to show to some of your people and then do Q&A afterwards as part of your training as well, don't you? I did, I did. So. <laughs> <laughs> because the topics that are covered are really super useful and, you know, they just reach the goal. So that's what I did. I uh, took the link, sent to the guys and said, okay, this is your homework and then we discuss it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I feel sorry for them. <laughs> <laughs> but it saved me some work, right? <laughs> saved you some work. Hey, if, if you ever want to do that and actually have me on afterward for q I'll be part of the Q&A, happy to do it for you. I, I owe you a favor mm. anyway. So, <laughs> and, and in the future, this might be the next uh, podcast you, you force them to watch after, you know, <laughs> going forward as well. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's been a pleasure. I, I hope I get to see you in 2023. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's been a it's been a great, you know, nice. informative first podcast of 2023. I'm excited to kick off the year with this. So thank you very much for being part of this. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. It's been a real pleasure. Talk at you soon. Talk to you. Bye. So it was a great conversation. We're really talking about the differences of supply demand, how to really connect and keep them engaged as well in continuous training. When I talk about demand planning, that's the prediction side of the equation. That's a prediction problem. It's responsible for compiling a demand forecast, an unconstrained, unbiased view, a representation of what the future is going to be based on probabilities, data, analytics, insights, what the best prediction of the future is going to be. Supply planning, that's the optimization side of the problem. It's not a prediction problem. It's an optimization problem. They're responsible for translating the demand plan into the most efficient and executionable plan that meets the business objectives. A lot of times that's a constrained plan. Now the key is it's an efficient plan 
to meet the business objectives? Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes is no, we don't want to do it because it's going to cost the company money or it doesn't meet our business objectives. So finding the business objectives and finding the most efficient way to respond to the prediction problem is what it is. That's an optimization problem. Those are the two sides of the equation. When I look at kind of supply, demand, or any types of planning, first thing we have to understand is where exactly planning, management, execution, strategy, and everything is. It's kind of viewed as a pyramid. And on this pyramid at the top is really the strategy part. This is the ex way extended you know, time horizon. Two, this is the strat plans, two, five years out. The planning hierarchy for is really that extended planning horizon outside of normal constraints. Most companies, three months, goes out and extended 18 months, two years. This is your planning hierarchy. This is where you're setting your plans. You're setting your buffers. You're setting your, where your game plan, your what-if scenarios at this. This is where supply and demand both operate, but they operate differently. Forecast is extended, no, absolutely no constraints. Uh, uh, supply is your response of what can you do at these extended planning horizons. Your management hierarchy is, is where you make the trade-offs. This is your slushy zone in many organizations. It's the two weeks out to about three months. You should just slush it. This is the management. So when we talk about demand management or supply management, we're, we're talking about the end-to-end -end processes from what is actual orders, what are we seeing in, in, in uh, the market the customers, what are our responses, what are trade-offs we can make, what buffers do we have to consume? That's the management side of it. And then the execution really becomes orders uh, focused. It's finite type capacity planning. That's where your execution. No matter what level you are on, whether it's your execution, your management, your planning, even your strat, the, really the goal from a supply planning perspective is to minimize my expenses increase my service, maximize my resources, and leverage my inventory to reduce cash being tied up. So it's really a cash cost service triangle that they're trying to balance efficiently to meet the business objectives. The objective is to balance supply, product, demand, all the plans in a manner that achieves the financial, service, cash, cost, objectives of what the enterprise is. Well, that's a wrap. I think I know exactly who I am now. And for the 12 people watching, I'm whatever you want me to be. And let me know if you need anything from the store. My name is Eric Wilson. You can find me at eric at ibf.org. That's eric at ibf.org. Thank you, Arkiva, for driving business transformation by solving what others cannot. Thank you, Arkiva. Thank you, IBF. Remember, we got some boot camps coming up in 2023. February, still time to register. Demand uh, planning boot camp in Las Vegas. March, SNOP boot camp in Chicago. August, a over my birthday, August 9th through the 11th. A supply chain, supply planning. You can find out more about supply planning in a two-day boot camp in Nashville, Tennessee. So I want to hope everybody makes it out. You can meet me at one of those boot camps. I can meet the 12 people watching today. Everybody comes out, hey, we'd have at least 13 people there. So thank you once again. I'm not a doctor, not a scientist, but the one thing I do know, wash your hands.